ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ the sevadars wanted me to talk about bani and its influence its power and so on power of bani uh, and we were going to talk about bani uh, in the next uh, hour or so they if you've got any uh, i would say uh, burning questions right while i'm talking if you really desperately want to ask me something just put your hand up and you can ask me okay you can stop me and you can ask me and uh, so hopefully that we can share some views about bani in no way am i going to even try to um make an influence about how great guru is because that's not possible to talk about ke guru di power kitni hai um guru sahib aap kehnde ne satgur ki mehma satgur jaane you cannot tell how great something is of the guru or god so satgur ki mehma satgur jaane jo kich kare so apan paane gur ki mehma kathan na jaye paav ram gur e hasmai you cannot tell how great god, guru is but we're going to make uh, a try of looking at the aspects of what guru is so the literary meaning in intellectual terms what is guru now guru is divided into two words which is gu and ru and yesterday we talked about light we talked about darkness and we talked about light gu is darkness and ru darkness in in our sense is not physical darkness but ignorance ignorance of the mind is gu darkness and ru as you would expect is light and enlightenment so in other words guru means light that dispels darkness or in other words enlightenment that dispels ignorance it is why pai gurdas ji says jyu kal suraj niklya tare chhape andher plowa that guru nanak was such a light like a sun that when the sun came out the darkness and the moon and the stars disappeared so guru nanak is light and guru means light that dispels darkness or in other in other words enlightenment that dispels ignorance so the opposite to darkness we're talking about is ignorance guru is like a bulb the bulb is a container this is a container what is inside it is light now there's no doubt the light inside this bulb or the light emanating from this bulb is separate from the bulb itself true any physicists here electrical engineers light is separate from this bulb bulb is the container guru is the light within the container you understand the guru is the light within the container the container is important only in the in the sense that it is required to emanate the light but surely the container can change right this isn't the only way to emit a light but what is true is that the light is separate from the container the light is separate from the bulb the bulb is not the guru this bulb is not the guru but the light within it is the guru so the visible thing that we see is not as it we can see in other words what we see is sometimes not what it appears to be guru nanak was a physical form of a body and what he appeared to be was a normal human being but what we couldn't see what people couldn't see is that inside that light that was emanating from him is separate from his body just like the bulb just like the light emanating from it in this material world a lot of emphasis is put on the container everything that we do we try to put emphasis on the actual container the bulb light the cut apa soch de but we put the emphasis on the container because in this material world with these five senses all we can see or touch is with what we can see and touch after all but guru is a shakti 
Guru is Jyot. Guru is not there. Guru is not a body. The Guru is the light that emanated from God. And in those three days, that light was placed within Guru Nanak. And that Guru Nanak's body then became an embodiment of that light. The light or the Shakti or the Jyot is the Guru. The body is not the Guru. Keep in mind that Jitni Vi Apri Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj Devich Baniya, have you noticed that at the end of each Shabad, what is the name of which Guru that is used all the time? What, what is used? Hanji. Nanak. Nanak is used. Why? Why is it that Guru Amar Das Ji, Guru Angad Dev Ji didn't use his name at the end of the Shabbas that they wrote? Because their bodies were immaterial. The light within them was the same, which I said at the beginning, that there has always been just one Guru. The light has never changed. The body has changed, but the light has never changed. So the body kept changing, and this is been enforced, emphasized in the Bani, written in the Guru Granth Sahib. And it says that Nanak proclaimed Lena succession. Pai Lena Ji, as you know, was who became Guru Angad Dev Ji. And Angad was a name given to Pai Lena Ji by Guru Nanak, that you are my Ang, you are part of my body, you are part of me. Pai Lena Ji served Guru Nanak in the last 25 years of his life in Kartarpur Sahib. Pailanaji became his close disciple and he earned the recognition of being spiritually uplifted and being appointed by God because the light within Guru Nanak was God and it is God who was the Guru of Guru Nanak. Guru Nanak's Guru was God within him and he appointed the next body that was going to take that light and continue continue the mission that Guru Nanak Dev Ji had started. So it, they say in the Gurbani that Nanak proclaimed Lena's succession. He earned it. They shared the one light and the same way of living. The king, i.e. Guru Nanak, just changed his body. The Guru gave his true command. Why should we hesitate to proclaim this? Why should we not accept this, is the Bani saying. Even though we know that his sons, Lakmi Das and Siri Chand, Baba Siri Chand and Baba Lakmi Chand, refused to accept Pailana Ji, refused to accept Pailana Ji as the next Guru. They said that we, as your sons, should be the next Guru. And Pai Gurdas Ji says that Guru Nanak changed the world upside down. In those days, at that time, it was an accepted tradition that the father will pass on the guruship always to his son. And Guru Nanak Dev Ji changed it upside down. He said it was like the Ganges, Ganga had gone the opposite way. He had completely mesmerized and astonished the world by giving the guruship to his disciple, Pailana Ji. The light was the same, but the body changed. They shared the same light. And so much emphasis is put on the body and not enough about the light which is within that body. The body is just a sarir. It is made of just basic elements. It has bones, it has a bit of blood, it has mass, it has nerves and so on. But if you grind it all down, it is just nothing. Five elements. And in spiritual terms, like fire, air, water, all of these elements are what makes what we can see in this world. The basic elements are the same. You can grind the body down, it is just the same. You can grind down a piece of paper, the elements will become the, become the same. There is no difference between them. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji, although it is true that there are some people who look better than others, there is no doubt about that. And I know Paisa wouldn't mind me showing this, he is a very good friend of mine. Aple Pai Sabji, from America. And uh, there are some good looking people who are turning away, don't want to show their good looking faces. True, body the emphasis as Dunya De Vich Kafiya, as you will see that the whole of the Western world and the Eastern world 
are committed billions and trillions of dollars and pounds on making you feel that you are not good looking. So all the adverts, whether you are buying a car or a TV or clothes or whatever, even food, it is the body that is used in order to entice you. So sari dunya, the emphasis is on the body. But what does Guru Sahib say? He says, Kaya mitti andha paune pucho jai. The body is merely a blind dust. Go and ask the soul. Because the soul, as you know, is different to your body. We all, we all recognize that, that the soul inside us is different to our body. And so the Guru says, Okay, the body is just mere dust. Why don't you ask the soul? And the soul answers back. Okay, it is true that I, the soul, keeps on changing. Because when you die, when we die, our soul then goes into another body. We believe in reincarnation. We believe that we can be born again and again. So, this Chirasi Lakhjun, what is happening is that the soul keeps on changing the vehicle in which it is placed. So in one Janam, you might be, be born maybe into a dog. Your soul is the same. And if you are a dog, and then you are born again as maybe, if you are lucky as a Sikh, or as a human being, you have that body. Which is why some people say that, Sade Jeevan which, sometimes, you know we say, You know we say that, stop barking like a dog. Sometimes we believe, spiritual people believe, okay, within you, there are Sanskrit, there are things that we have brought along from our previous Janams that are still showing itself in our human birth. So we sometimes dance like a monkey, yeah? We wither like a snake, we are sly like a fox, yeah? We bark like a dog, we're stupid like donkeys, yeah? Akalniya. So, these things, wise people say, are some of the sanskars that we have taken on from our previous births. These are examples of how subtly these things come within a human birth. But Guru Sahib says, Ke kaya mati andha, mitiya, body is nothing. It is mere dust. There is no value for the body. Asks the soul, and the soul says, yes, I am enticed by maya, because it is maya, Kaam, Krodh, Lo, Mohankar, all the things that turn us away from God is Maya. It is that which keeps me, the soul says, from being liberated and instead I have to be born again and again and again and again into different bodies. So, Guru Sahib emphasis kardene ke mati Miti bilkul is nothing. And at the present rate, as you know, Sade Babe Vadde Pene, every week, every year, there are more and more Babes and Gurus. Because the world has decided that we need humans, we need bodies. So these Babes and these Chuthe Gurus are proliferating at a, such a rate that there are probably at some time in some towns more Gurus more babes than they are even their disciples. Babes itne jade vad gene. To the extent that Guru Gobind Singh Ji warned his Sikhs that a time will come that people will start saying that asi aap rabha. In to the extent that we ourselves are our gods and Guru Sahib said kar kar hoye bahe hai rama tin ke sare na kau kama that a time will come that in many households that people will start saying that we ourselves are our gods. Dunya es leher te turi paya. And it is becoming harder and harder for the, us Sikhs to establish this mere simple fact that Guru ik jyota hai. Guru is light. Guru is not a body. So the emphasis is on the light and the jyot. If we go deeper into Gurbani, we see that Guru Sahib has emphasized it again and again. The reason I suppose we're doing this talk is that it is not easy for us to believe. A lot of us tend not to believe that Guru Granth Sahib Guru. And we, we have doubts. 
we have this pulekha or duality param that how can how can mere pages of a book be a guru and so a lot of the gurbani in the gurgan sahib guru sahib right from guru nanak dev ji has nurtured his disciples to believe this concept and to prove it it is only that after 200 years from guru nanak dev ji to guru gobind singh ji that guru gobind singh finally told the six k today scriptures guru gan sahib after his father guru teg bahadur ji's bani was written when the mission was completed which was started by guru nanak dev ji when he disappeared for 3 days and went to god that mission was completed when guru gobind singh ji finally passed away and he included the bani of his father guru teg bahadur ji then the guru's words or the essence of the guru was complete the mission was complete and it was at that time that guru gobind singh then told the six ke sab sikhan ko hukum hai guru manio granth ke guru granth ji is your guru but before that 200 years the gurus have been teaching us this and if we look at this it says shabad gur peera peer means a leader guru shabad gur peera gehar gambira bin shabde jag bauraning that without the word without the shabad the whole world is insane if you can read this you can read this with with me then guru sahib says bani guru guru hai bani which bani amrit sare then the guru sahib says satgur bachan bachan hai satgur padar mukat janave go the true guru is the word is the jyot is the light and the word of the guru is the true guru who teaches us the path of liberation and pai gurdas ji says gur murat and i we emphasize pai gurdas ji and the reason for this is that in the whole of sikh tradition pai gurdas ji is recognized as the first philosopher of gurbani pai gurdas ji wrote many things two pieces of work that he has written they are called anybody know pai gurdas diya vara and kabit not many people read the kabit of pai gurdas ji perhaps because the language that was used was bridge bhasha which is more like hindi whereas the vara are more like simple punjabi so especially in the akhand kirtan jatha when they sing kirtan they sing a lot of pai gurdas diya vara pai gurdas diya vara are like philosophy of gurbani pai gurdas ji as i told you yesterday was the sakha mama of guru arjan dev ji guru arjan dev ji compiled the gurgan sahib as you know and guru arjan dev ji asked pai or requested or hukum deke pai gurdas ji to write the whole of the gurgan sahib apart from that pai gurdas ji was sent to all the centers of the hindus in the south of india to preach sikhism and it is there that pai gurdas ji wrote the kabits and where he wrote the vara we believe as six that what pai gurdas ji wrote was 100% correct you can imagine so pai gurdas ji is writing something and then he sits in harmandar sahib the ale dwale jithe manji sahib and so on where the six used to come to see guru arjan dev ji and he used to sit there and do katha can you imagine that he saying something which was wrong don't you think that the guru arjan dev ji would have stopped him i think he would have stopped him and his vara was being translated and being used to preach sikhism if pai gurdas ji had written something wrong guru arjan dev ji would have stopped him guru har gobind sahib would have stopped him the other gurus would have stopped him that what you have written is wrong so the most authentic and true philosophy of guru of gurbani we take as pai gurdas ji vara so it is important for us to quote pai gurdas ji at times when we are talking about gurbani and pai gurdas ji says gur murat gur shabad hai that the murti the true body of the guru is shabad he was watching guru arjan dev ji he didn't say the true guru is guru arjan dev ji's body he said no gur murat gur shabad hai that the shabad is the true body of the guru satgur mein shabad 
शब्द में सतगुरु है एंड इफ वी गो बैक टू गुरु नानक देव जी इस टाइम वेन ही वॉज मेयर सिक्सटीन सेवनटीन ईयर्स ओल्ड सॉरी वेन ही वॉज पास थर्टी सिक्स थर्टी सेवन थर्टी एट ईयर्स ओल्ड ही वेंट इन टू द माउंटेन सुमेर पर्वत इन द हिमालयस एंड ही वॉन्टेड टू सी द सिद्ध दोज ऋषिज दोज पीपल हु रिक्लूसिज हु आर डूइंग टप्स एंड सोन इन द माउंटेन्स and they asked guru nanak dev ji certain questions and these questions and answers are in a bani written by guru nanak dev ji anybody in the middle know what this bani is sid ghost sid ghost ghost means anybody know what ghost means discussion aap kehne ghost karni hai ghosti karni hai that means to discuss something so guru nanak dev ji wrote a bani called sid ghost and in it guru nanak dev ji has written questions and answers that the sids were asking him and one of the first questions that the sids asked him was this kavan mool kavan mat vela tera kavan guru jiska tu chela you know when i was your age probably the age of 14 15 i started to look at bani because we used to sing bani and or if i used to hear bani is to look at certain words and say okay what does this mean what does this mean what does this mean and i used to open up the amrit kirtan and on the footnotes it sometimes gives you the meanings of it one of the first things that i did was the japji sahib i looked up some translation and read up some of the words in the japji sahib slowly and slowly over many many years you start realizing that certain words mean certain things and it is by doing that that you can slowly and slowly without realizing it accumulate an intellect of knowing what bani is saying some people are a bit more uh, concentrated than that they actually sit down and study they say i want to learn gurbani and they gurbani di santhya sikhde ne ke the meaning ki hai kya but for me and you that is very hard to do but what i would ask you to do is start looking at words and having that picture in the mind that this word means this so next time you see that same word in the bani somewhere else you know what it means kavan mool kavan mat vela vela means what does vela mean uh, morning moment or time what was the time okay vela means time like amrit vela yeah amrit vela time the time of amrit vela tera kavan guru what does that mean who was your guru yeah tera kavan guru kavan guru yeah jiska tu chela very it's quite simple ha huh? na parts of it is very simple so the sids asks what is the root of the source of all where did all this world start from what teachings are to be followed in this times of kaljug who should we follow they asked him who is your guru whose disciple are you what is that speech by which you can remain unattached in other words how can you remain unattached to the world what do you have to do listen to what we say you little boy nanak they, they treated him like a little boy because they were very old age and he was a mere youth in his 30s they said to little boy nanak listen to what we have to say give us your opinion on what we have said how can the shabad carry us across this terrifying ocean this shabad you keep talking about how can it save us in this world and guru nanak dev ji's reply pavan arambh satgur mat vela shabad guru surt tun chela and guru nanak dev ji replied from the air came the beginning that before that there was nothing when air was form formed the whole of mankind came into existence this is the age they asked him what is this age this is the age of the true guru's teachings this is the age of the true guru's teachings the shabad is the guru upon whom i lovingly focus my consciousness who was the guru of guru nanak who was the guru of guru nanak 
बोलो वाहे गुरु गॉड गॉड इज द गुरु ऑफ गुरु नानक एंड गुरु नानक इज सेइंग दैट द शब्द इज द गुरु माय गुरु गॉड इज अ ज्योत ही इज शब्द यू यू गॉड कैन नॉट बी पुट इनटू लाइक दिस इज गॉड और दिस इज गॉड इवन दो गॉड इज विद इन एवरीथिंग बट यू कांट से कि दिस इज गॉड एंड द वे दैट गॉड manifested himself manifested means in you have to find a way of putting yourself into something so that people like us in this world can see it i forgot to bring this with me if i say to you there is fire in a stone would you believe me there is fire in a stone but he says he won't believe me there's fire in a stone but if me and you know that if i took a flint and i hit the flint against another flint what would come out a spark which is fire fire flame whatever the essence of it is fire fire is within the stone but we can't see it if i showed you a matchstick a child who has never seen it before and i say there is fire in here and he will laugh but when you strike that match there will fire in it it is hard to believe that there can be fire in a piece of stick it is hard to believe that there can be so much destruction in a little piece of a 5 mm amount of some chemical but there is fire in it there is no doubt about that because these things are easier to prove we are finding it difficult to accept that there can be god within something that shabad is the essence of god so guru nanak says the shabad is the guru upon whom i focus my attention i am the disciple speaking the shabad i remain unattached in other words guru nanak says that as long as his mind and soul are focused on god and is god conscious he remains unattached from the world it is like walking through this and not knowing that you are even exist here because just like a hathi di chal a hathi an elephant when he is storming down he doesn't care whether there is branches here or stones here he just wipes them all apart like this his chal is straight irrelevant what is around him and guru nanak dev ji says i remain unattached as long as my focus is within god o oh, nanak nanak and then through the ages the lord of the world wahe guru is my guru so god wahe guru has manifested himself as a shabad and placed himself inside guru nanak and guru nanak is using wahe guru his guru to say things to us in the form of bani bani is simply the word form of god what god is telling guru nanak to tell us so long as we are focused with wahe guru which is in other words the same as a guru nanak dev gobind roop is in the bani guru says ke nanak dev guru amar das ji kehne ke nanak dev guru nanak dev ji is gobind roop he was himself god the roop of god so wahe guru is guru which is the word which is bani so which is why apa kehnde ne ke bani nirankar hai we say that and in bani can you remember where guru guru sahib says ke bani is nirankar does anybody remember that's right uchi bolo waho waho bani nirankar hai as six i do find it astonishing and this has been 17 years of seeing students and young people ke uh, apa for some reason we feel kind of like a little bit irky about saying bani in front of others we don't want to show our devotion to guru we feel a bit kind of like oh my god what would people say 
that oh my god I, lo- I love my guru i love my bani w- what is there to be shy about what is there to be you know mm, about you know, oh, better not say it loud uh, other people of other faiths are amazing what we lack is that dedication that pyar that focus for our guru it was they we are full of dubda we're full of doubts we fail to believe our guru apa kende hai ki sanu sikhi naal pyar hai si baro di bahut dikhawa karde hai ki sanu aa hai sanu oh hai si aa karde hai wo karde hai but when it comes to the crunch we became we become a little bit kind of like oh so bani japde hai why sankoch why think twice kaisi bani boliye so guru sahib nirankar bani nu kende ne kithe kende ne waho waho bani nirankar hai tis jevad tis jevad avar na koi there is nothing like it waho waho bani nirankar hai bani guru says is god which is what guru sahib is saying so bani is guru guru is bani te guru paatsha ji dasde ne ke pothi parmeshwar ka than guru arjan dev ji when he established the gurgan sahib as a scripture of the six which they used to call aad bir Guru Arjan Dev Ji installed it in 1604 in the Harmandar Sahib. Since 1604, the Harmandar Sahib, the Golden Temple, just no Gorey can deny. The Aad Bir was installed inside the Harmandar Sahib. The only difference between that Bir and the Bir that we now matha take the as Guru Granth Sahib is that Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji's Bani was not in it until Guru Gobind Singh Ji came and put Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji's Bani in it. And do you know that since that day? Guru Arjan Dev Ji never sat on a manji in front of the Guru Granth Sahib. In fact, Guru Arjan Dev Ji used to put a white sheet on the floor next to the the Pothi Sahib and used to sleep there. And in the Harmandar Sahib, you see that the Guru Granth Sahib is over here. The Kirtaniyas are sitting over there, and Guru Sahib never used to sit above the platform of the Guru Granth Sahib of the Aad Bir Pothi Sahib, just to make sense. In those days, they used to call it pothi sahay, pothi meaning a book, or other people used to say ard bir. This pothi sahay, right from the time of Guru Arjan Dev Ji, was respected like a guru, even from that time. Even though the mission had not been completed, and the Akal Purk had not given that wish, agya pay Akal ki tabi chalayo panth sab sikhon ko hukum hai, guru maniyo granth. although the six recognize that the shabad is the guru so what is this essence of the power of guru guru sahib kande ne man sat gur saran te aave go loha hiran hove sang paras gun paras ko hoye aave go so in english if you want to if you want to read it i'm getting a little bit tired my voice please read the english for me all of you oh my oh mind seek the sanctuary you know the sad thing is the real sad thing is this that even though we know that guru granth sahib guru hai you don't need to be taught that what i've done in the last half an hour is trying to show you that the guru has always been shabad that guru nanak dev ji's guru was shabad and the bani that guru nanak was saying was just god coming through him and that got placed in a book in a piece of paper with some ink and then when it was compiled by guru by by gurudas ji and installed as a guru by guru gobind singh we started saying ke guru granth sahib and even though we do that the sad thing is that the sikh nation has never recognized it you know that at the turn of the century in the 1900 1901 1902 1903 1903 if i said to you that in harmandar sahib there were countless idols 
of Shiv, Vishnu, Shiva, all these idols were placed within the Harmandar Sahib. The Granth Sahib was there, Prakash, but the idols were there. Do you know there was a six foot high model of Guru Har Gobind Sahib at the entrance of Harmandar Sahib? And the pandits and the so called Sikhs used to do Devi Puja there in 1904, 1905. Does that make you kind of astonished? That at the turn of the century, this was happening inside our Harmandha Sahib? Have we truly recognized that the Guru is Guru Granth Sahib? And there were people who were ancestors of Guru Nanak, the Bedis, that they had assumed Guruship for centuries after Guru. And they had established themselves deras all over Punjab. In fact, when they used to come and sit inside a Darbar Sahib, they used to bring a cushion and sit on top of the cushion. They refused to sit at the same level as the rest of the Sangat. They said that we are the ancestors of Guru Nanak, who is the true Guru. Sanuvi Guru di Padvi Honi Chediya. You should recognize, and I've got photos, actual photographs of these ancestors with chores have been done over them. And there was a huge outcry at the turn of the century. And you might know, I think Jagjit Singh might uh, run through this in his workshops of uh, politics and uh, Sikh religion, that at the turn of the century, there was a huge liberation movement called the Gurdwara Reform Movement. And the Sikhs of the Guru then tried to chuck out these people from the Gurdwaras. You know, people who were of lower caste, who were Sikhs, Ammatari Sikhs who were lower caste weren't even allowed to go inside the Akal Takhat. They weren't allowed to even have Prashad inside the Akal Takhat. The Jatheda of the Akal Takhat had approved this. There's a huge movement to get rid of these imposters in our Sikh religion. The Hunavi, Sade Sikh nation, they which bohot bohot imposters ne. Everywhere you go, in all the Gurdwaras that they are, even in England, you have Mahans and Babas and Sants who take over the role of the Guru and they impose their own concepts to the Sangat, even to this day. Probably a lot worse now than they were in the 1900s. In the 1900s, when the Sikhs got rid of these imposters, they had to give their lives away. So you heard of Nankana Sahib Dasaka, for instance, where the Sikhs tried to liberate the Gurdwara from the Mahant there, and hundreds of Sikhs were gunned down with cannons and, and bullets and they were hung upside down on a tree and burnt alive. That tree still exists in Nankana Sahib. So they had to lay their lives down and I asked what are we going to have to do? What are you going to have to do to liberate our Gurdwaras? There's no point in complaining that oh, this Gurdwara doesn't do this and they don't let us do this. You're going to have to do something to liberate these Gurdwaras. In those days you have to give lives. What are we going to give now? If we look around in Harmandha Sahib, in every Gurdwara in India and even in England, they're selling these uh, necklaces and stuff, photos of Guru Nanak. You have idols of Guru Nanak. And in India, all over India, people matha take the name idols. Nu. If you go to people's houses, calendars, open photo, again, the photo on the They said, astonishingly, that even in houses of those so called Sikh, Jede Amratari Sikh, ne, who know this, ke Shabad Guru hai, even in their houses you will have photos of Gurus, they will not take a photo. They will not take a photo. Oh, there is still a photo of Guru. Kaya Mati and hai. There is no value for this body. They said, Shabad Guru hai, Guru Gan Sab hai. So, statues of the Gurus, photos of the Guru, all of this is creeping back into the Sikh fold. And let me make one thing very clear, that just by respecting the physical form of the Guru does not make you a better Sikh. Do you know how many thousands and thousands of people met Guru Nanak? Did they all become Sikhs? Did they become his disciples? Were they liberated just by meeting Guru Nanak? No. When Guru Arjan Dev Ji was around, did, did the Muslims and the other people and Chandu, 
did not they see that Guru Arjan Dev Ji was part of Guru Nanak? Did they not see the Guru when they put him on a Tati Tavi and fried him? Did they not see the Guru and get liberated when they put him in a cauldron of hot boiling water and boiled him to death? Did they not see Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji when they beheaded him? Countless thousands and thousands of humans saw the Gurus, but just seeing the Guru, the Matha Tekke, you do not become liberated. You do not become a Sikh. In the same way, Guru Granth Sahib, the Darshan Karne, Matha Tekne, does not make you liberated. It does not change you into a Sikh. You are not a Sikh of the Guru simply by bowing yourself down. How many have you seen who go to the Gurdwara? You see these old people go around the Guru Granth Sahib, take the Hukum Nama, and then they walk off again. My Guru de Darshan Karne. But have they become Guru? Sikh. The Guru Sahib does they ne Sat Guru nu sab ko vekda jeta jagat sansar. The whole world sees the Guru. Sat Guru nu sab ko vekda jeta jagat sansar par dithe mukt na hovi. By seeing the Guru, you do not become liberated. Jichar shabad na kare. Vichar. Until that person does not become one with the Shabad and understands the Shabad, understands the Guru, you cannot become liberated. So we need to start thinking ke how we are with the Guru Granth Sahib, Sade Guru Nal, ke asi vyakti Guru nu dekh rehne, ke asi asli Shabad Guru nu puja kar deya. True Sikh is a Sikh of Pujari of the Shabad Guru, not of the Vyakti Guru. Although, because the word cannot be expressed in any other way besides ink and on a piece of paper, how else can you put the word in this world, the world that we live in, the only way that we have to put word on a piece of paper is using an ink. So the Guru has used that, because that is how humans see things. Which is why that the Guru now takes the shape of a book, of a bead, which we call the Guru Granth Sahib, Granth meaning a book. But the true Guru lies within it. Just like the true Guru was inside Guru Arjan Dev Ji, which only some people saw, the others boiled him and killed him and tortured him to death. So. If you, if the book was to be burnt, if you destroy the Guru Granth Sahib physically, what do you have left? Yes, the point I was trying to make that when you burn the book, no, you are actually left with some ashes. You're left with some ashes. That's all it is, ashes. If you burnt a body, what are you left with? What is the difference between the ashes of the book and the ashes of a body? There's no difference. The elements are the same. So whether Guru Nanak came as a human body or comes as the Guru Granth Sahib as a book, there's no difference. The elements are the same. The element of the ashes, dust to dust, is the same. The ashes of Guru Nanak, the ashes of Guru Arjan Dev Ji, the ashes of Guru Har Krishan Sahib Ji, of the body, is the same as any dust anywhere. So Guru Granth Sahib, the ashes are the same. The body is irrelevant. But the Shabad within that is the Guru. That has never changed. What we fail to see is that that essence of Shabad, what we look at is the body, which is irrelevant. So, the Bani is like a philosopher's stone. And I would like to share in the next 5-6 minutes with you, what is a philosopher's stone? Has anybody heard of the philosopher's stone in the movies? Yeah? Hey? Harry Potter. That's right. Harry Potter. 
and the philosopher's stone. Now, I'm not too sure of how the philosopher's stone was used in Harry Potter because I didn't really see it very well. It's been some time. But the philosopher's stone in other countries is called Paris. Paris is something that can change even things like metal, iron, into gold. It can change it. It can even change it to itself. Guru Nanak has said that the Guru, which you all know now, is Shabad, which is Bani. The Guru is Paras. And if you come close to the Paras, as you know from Harry Potter, that it will change you. And what we need to talk about is how can the Bani change you? And Guru Nanak says, Man Satguru Saranti Avego, my mind seek the sanctuary of the true Guru. So there's no point going into the Darbar Sahib and Matha take it to the sanctuary which Agya. That is not the sanctuary of the Guru. The sanctuary of the Guru is the Shabbat. Have we been into the sanctuary of the Guru? Or have we merely sat in a room in which there is a book? With lots of silk cloths over it. Whose sanctuary are we sitting in? In the sanctuary of the Shabbat? Have we got close to the sanctuary of the Shabbat? Or a sanctuary of something else? But Guru Nanak says that when we come to the sanctuary of the Shabbat, you, see, you would say, okay, how come? I am a I am a Gurdwari Janda, I am a Karda, I am a Prakash Karda, I am a change. Nothing's happened to me. I haven't changed. I How comes nothing happens to me? How comes that you can spend your whole life going to Gurdwaras and you can do Kirtans and you can wake up and nothing happens? And what question we would have to ask is whose sanctuary sanctuary means whose safety where, a place of safety where you feel comfortable whose sanctuary have we come to? Whose Sangat has, have we been doing in all that time? Guru Sahib says, Oh my mind, seek the sanctuary of the Shabbat, of the true Guru, and meditate. Iron is transformed into gold by touching the philosopher's stone. It takes on its qualities. The true Guru is the philosopher's stone. Whoever is attached to him receives fruitful rewards. Guru Sahib says, Gur Paras Hamlo Milkanchan Hoyaram. The Guru is the philosopher's stone, but his touch transforms even iron into gold. So, what is the hukam from the Guru? The hukam is Gabo, Suno, Pado, Nitpai. Gur Pure, Pura Guru Kona. Shabad, Guru Pure Tu Rakhya. Gavo, Sari Paro, Gavo, Suno, Paro, Nit Pai, Guru Pure Tu Rakhya. Gavye, Suniye, Man Rakhye, Pao, Dukh, Parhar, Sukh Kar Lejao. Jai, Dukh, Dukh, Parhar, Sukh Kar Lejao. We've been reading Japji Sai for ages. Eh? Gavye, Sunye, Sunye, Sid Peer Sarnath, Sunye, Tart Double Aka, Sunye, Pakon Sunda, Kon Manda, Kon Ganda, Kon Parda. Hukam is to sing it, to write it. Kahete Pavitan, Sunte Sabtan, Likti, Kultarya Jio. Guru Nanak says, that those who say it become pure. Those who listen are great. Sunte sabtan likti kultarya jiyo. Those who write Bani can save all their generations. This is the power of Bani. How many of us here actually write Gurbani? Is anybody here who actually sits down and writes Gurbani for the sake of writing Gurbani? Not many. It's a few. There are some people who I know will sit down and write 
Vaheguru or Bani over and over again. You know, writing, this isn't just, oh, he felt like saying it, you should write it and sing it. Why did Guru Sahib write this? There are many things I would like to say that we do not understand. Maybe in a hundred years time, people will start saying, oh, if humans write something down, it changes their psyche. It changes their... I know for a fact, in terms of handwriting, people who study handwriting, they say that you can tell a character of a person when you write. Yeah? People in America, for instance, use this technique to interview people. Before they come for an interview, they look at their handwriting. Because they say, It comes out in their handwriting. You know and I know when you are rushing, your handwriting changes. When you are angry, when you are angry and you write something, what happens? You break the pen or the paper tears, isn't it? When you're writing some something nice to your, you know, <laughs> how does your handwriting change? Huh? All these little stars and this, and we use colored things. Love is colorful. Love is fanciful. Love is what Guru Nanak is talking about. Joto prem khelan ka chao. It is about love. It is those who fail to love, fail to become Sikhs. You can't become a true Sikh without knowing what love is. Jinnah ne pyaar ne kade kita to fall in love with the Guru and feel what love is, Sikh ni baan sakde. It is the first step, is to love, to have devotion. And you know how your writing changes when you write something. Guru Sahib says that when you actually write Bani, you can save and liberate all your generation's ancestors. It is the power of writing something. Prabhu Bani Shabad Sopa Kya Gavo Suno Pado Nit Pai Gur Pure Tu Rakhya That when you do this, the Guru will protect you. Ha Nit Gavo Suno Pado Nit Nit means to do on a daily basis. When we say nit name, name means to do something. Nit means to do it every day. So the hukam is okay, to sing it, to listen to it all the time. What about the kachibani? There is a lot of that around. Well, the hukam for that is very simple. There is bani and there is kachibani. There is no in between. There is no other written form of a word that is e equal to the Shabad Guru. That is, in essence, I would say, Akal Purkh de Upar Var Kitiya. Jera Banda, Jera Sikh, Kachi Bani Padke in front of the Guru, Karya, Ketusi Kachi Bani Paro. You are almost, can you imagine what you are doing? That God came inside Guru Nanak as a Shabad. And Guru Nanak took that Shabad and put it on a piece of paper in his pothi, which we respect as the Guru. And some of these people sit there and they sing this Kachi Bani instead of God Himself. That is an affront to God Himself. And Guru Amar Das Ji in Anand Sahib clearly says it through this, that without the true Guru, all other Bani is false. The songs are false. The speakers are false. And those who listen to them are false. Those who speak and recite it are chuthe. Kacche ne. Guru Sahib says, Mere mohin sarvani eh na sunai. Don't let my ears listen to anything but the Bani. Because Guru Sahib says that when you listen to something that is not the Bani, it is sakat geet nad to nagavat bolat bol ajai. All these pangra songs and songs and songs and all of these things that we listen to, they affect you, doesn't it? If we were to put, truly, if we put some really funky Pangra song now, in many of us, that we will start tapping. Yeah? Our feet will start tapping. Right? We will start doing this. 
right? Given half a chance, some of the people might want to start getting up and... <laughs> I have seen with my eyes, and I would disbelieve it 17 years ago when we started Khalsa Camp, I would, if somebody told me, I would say, no, it's not possible. Seen Nihang sings with Gatre Karpana, Chole Payoe, Keshare Lambe, Lambia Lambia Daria, Upper Chakar Te Khandela Ene, and they are standing there in like a mob and they are dancing to Pangre. Shamefully. And I have seen Keskiya Varia Bibia with Gatre Karpan, with Sona Suna Thapya Changa. And Pangraya de Vecha, they are dancing in Pangra. I would not believe it 17 years ago. What has happened to the youth in 17 years since 1991? I don't know what kind of teaching has been told. But what I do know is there are many Sikhs, even in Bana, who are Amritari, who are doing this kind of show. The Guru Sahib Kandane Kache, Pikke, Fikke. Sakat. Sakat means somebody who is disgusting, wretched. Guru Sahib says that the people who listen to this, 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 there are many other bani which by Surjit Singh Ji will share with you that Guru Sahib has specifically said that there is nothing but just mere animals dancing around. Fools dancing with fools to foolish tunes. And you get nothing out of it. I would say not, not nothing out of it. Everything has a, 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 a response. What is the word Einstein ki can every to every force there is what? A reaction, reaction, action and reaction. <laughs> yeah, something like that. You can tell I'm a I did physics at A level. No, I didn't actually, it was O level. There is an action and reaction. It is not K I am here. It will make a difference. It does make a difference. What that difference is, we can discuss in our discussion time. Everything has an effect. And I want to put up here a few of the things that we can discuss of what these effects are. You know, sitting at a certain place has an effect. If it didn't, why would you spend hundreds and thousands of pounds going to other countries for holidays? Why do people want to spend hundreds of pounds and put carbon footprints all over the world? That's my eco thing for the, today, yeah. <laughs> Why would we do that? You could go and sit in the sandy beach over here, but it's not the same, is it? It's not the same effect. Why do people go to these places? Because land, Stonehenge, and other places, mountains, and streams, and rivers, they have a physical and emotional effect on the human. There is no doubt about that. Just as much if we were now to walk into a disco area or into a pub, we, it would affect us. We could walk into a club where there's drinks. We don't have to touch them. We don't have to take part in it. But we can stand there. You can't tell me it hasn't affected you. It affects your mind, it affects your soul, it affects your body. It does affect the kind of air that we breathe. It affects us. It affects us emotionally as well as physically and spiritually. For instance, where you have nuclear fallout, the air there is fatal. You will die from the air. There is some air that if you take up and you start squeaking like me. <laughs> Helium. Air has an effect. Everything around us has an effect. The food that we eat, right? We all know Kheer, Prashad, Chake, right? We feel like this. <laughs> Say pressure is building. Namni Japunda. How can it be? How can it be that to see a duck hake, the fate to see It's not possible. Food 
has a physical effect as well as something that we don't know which is spiritual effect which is why Guru Sahib says ke meat nahi khana, maas nahi khana. it's not my topic today to talk about that but it is absolutely clear in the Bani and our Sikh tradition ke maas khana bilkul bhi bar jata hai. there is no such thing as eating meat in Sikh nation in the Guru Granth Sahib eating meat not only has a physical detrimental effect on the human body which in many parts of the world even today then when Sikhs are not the only vegetarian people even the Gore now acknowledge ki eating certain kinds of meat and meat and meat products is detrimental to the human body in terms of cancers and other diseases that we don't even know about but meat also affects the psyche and in one way it is this the way Guru Sahib has talked about it is about compassion to see kise chare janwar nu animal nu you cut it you take it away from its mother then you bleed it to death then you kill it and co it and take the skin off and oh mask how and that essence of that animal the emotions and the spiritual of spirit of that animal then you take it inside you to another loop in there or another mask on there only chirbi on there the bones you crush and you say that it will have no effect on you it's not possible everything has an effect sugar has an effect how many of us need a sugar rush how many of us need coffee in the morning how many of us drink loads of coke tea red bull there's red bull in some places i won't say where but uh, i've seen red bull here uh. food food has an effect there is no doubt about food food has an effect drink has an effect weather has an effect you know when it's raining out there and it's miserable well who's used the word miserable god is not having a miserable rain it's not miserable clouds it's not miserable atmosphere but the humans feel it is miserable because humans we don't like this cloudy and wet weather it's miserable but you know to the gurmuk gurmukha vaste when the rain is barshda te oh kanne ke saavan aaya he sakhi it's not miserable for the gurmuks onna vaste koi cheez miserable nahi hai ki hay hay ni dhup e ni dhup shadow this night air conditioning te tatti taviyan te baith ke guru sahib kanne ne ke tera tera bhana tera kiya meetha lage ki guru arjan dev ji nu 50 degrees of heat sitting in that dungeon onna nu tatti hawa nahi lagi you've been to lahore you've been in june to pakistan and you know what the heat is there 50 degrees sitting in a dungeon in lahore waiting to be executed ke onna nu tatti hawa kyu nahi lagi tatti wow na lagi it is not mere words the Bani is God and God is saying that those people who have the Shabbat within them he was sitting in one of the jails God knows for how many years he had been there and a priest wanted to see this man whom they were being told that his face was always glowing he's been in this jail in solitude confinement no windows no air closing the door he drank water alone he refused to eat the food which they had made food has an essence it has an influence until it is made correctly why should a sick eat it you want to eat the right thing he refused to eat it when the priest saw him he was shocked okay how can how can you be like this the guru sahib said i'm not alone then what do you mean you're not alone you're sitting alone in this jail it is no windows no air no nothing no light electricity what do you mean you're not alone oh okay. guru pai sahib said to the priest why don't you sit with me and spend a night and i will show you the priest stayed a night there before the night was over he was banging the doors let me out couldn't take it gurmukhanu kyun nahi lagda because they are never away from the shabad so the weather 
where you are, what you breathe, all makes an effect. What about Bani? Pai Gudasji says, just like in a mountain, there is minerals deposited within the mountains. Where else can you find diamonds? Where else can you find gold? Where else can you dig up silver? Pai Gudashi says, the person, the miner who knows how to do it, he can take it out because he knows how to do it. He will build a mine and he will mine the gems. Just like the flocks of birds, they see the samundar and the river and in it, there are much food for them, the fish. And he will sit there and wait for the fish to come and he will take the fish out and eat it. He will take something out from which there is something of value. And Pai Gudasji says in the same way, Taise Gurbani Vikhe Sagar Padarat Hai Joi Joi Khoje Soi Soi Nip Javi Pai Gudasji says in the same way, Gurbani is a house of treasure. I feel a bit humbled here standing to try to tell you gave the power of Gurbani. When I heard the title, I thought, oh my God, what can I say about the power of Gurbani? Except to say that the power is so enormous, it is God himself. And Pai Gurdasji says, whatever you want from it, the more you pick, the more you find, the more you coach, the more you search, the gems you will pick out. Taise Gurbani bikhe sagal padarat hai. All kinds of padarat, of value. Joi joi khoje, soi soi nip javahi. And Guru Sahib says, Sachi bani meethi amrat tar. Bani is amrat. Naam is amrat. Amrat is something the word that can make a dead person alive, make you live forever. Guru Sahib says, Sachi Bani is Mithi, Amratar. It is like a Mithi, Khandmangan Mithi is Amratar, Jin Piti is Mokh Dwar. Those who have drunk it have been liberated. Amrat Bani, Har Har Teri, Sun Sun Hove, Param Gat Meri. Gusev says, Turki Bani Ai, Tin Sagli Chint Matai. Gusev says, How else, you know, when we say okay, the Guru is with us, and you think, Well, how can the Guru be with me? Hey, if Guru Nanak Dev Ji, if Guru Arjan Dev Ji was sitting over there, and a Sikh is in Lahore, and Guru Arjan Dev Ji is somewhere else, how can that Sikh say, Guru Mere Sang Sada Hai Nale? It's not possible. How can the Guru be in that place and in that place if he was the body? He's got um, Guru Shabbat, so if he's got Bani in his heart and he's remembered it and it's in his heart, then that means he's got Guru. Because the element of the Shabbat is everywhere. Do you understand? Particles, you know, this air, I am sharing the same air as you're sharing, unfortunately. Yeah? You're breathing, when you're laughing, I'm breathing your, you know, I'm breathing what you're breathing. We're all circulating the same molecules here. You're breathing the same air as I'm breathing, while Guru Arjan Dev Ji is sharing the light of God within him because he is the light. And the Sikh sitting in Lahore remembering Guru Arjan Dev Ji is repeating the same Shabbat, the same Bani as he is sharing. Can you imagine, like a science fiction movie, that the particles of this Bani are attached to God. And God is everywhere. So these particles of Bani are everywhere. And what the Sikh does is, that when he repeats the Bani with his heart and his love and devotion, that that connection is made. And when that connection is made, the Sikh can truly say, Guru Mere Sang, Sada Hai Nale, Simar Simar, Tis Sada Samale. Truly, our Guru is Aung San. The Guru, when I want the Guru to be with me, he can be there with me. And when you're sitting in exam and you're thinking about, hey Guru, you know, I haven't really done the work that I should have done. Can you save me? 
and the Guru can save him. What about Lakhan Shah? Hey, he was in the sea. There was a huge storm there. And he asked the Guru. He didn't know who the Guru was. He knew that the Guru Nanak's Gadi was being... Somebody is on Guru Nanak's... The Nanak's soul was inside somebody. He didn't know who. But he said, Hey Guru Nanak, if you save me, I will donate certain amount of money to you when I see you. He was saved. He came to the Punjab and Lakhan Shah, I think it was Lakhan Shah, huh? Makhan Shah. Makhan Shah. Lakhan Shah was Guru, Guru Ladore, Hanji. Makhan Shah, Hanji. So he went to the Guru and what did he find? He find, found there were at least 22 other imposters sitting there all calling themselves Guru and he didn't know who the Guru was. And he gave a piece of money, gold, hair, hair, matha, take ya, sarya de. He said, one of them must be the Guru. And they were given money, they took the money and that was it. And he said, well, hmm, I have been saved, but I do know who the real Guru is. I've done my bit, I better go home now. He was a merchant. And then one Sikh said to him, hold on, there is another Sikh, another Baba. But he doesn't come out much. And he has remained in meditation for many years. Why don't you do his darshan as well? So he went to see in Bakala, a town called Bakala. He went into, down into the ground where this little room was. And there was a person sitting there. And Makhan Shah did the matha. And he put the same amount of coins as he did for all the others. And he got up. And he was about to leave, and the person said, Hey, Makan Shah, where are you going? They, he was a bit astonished, how did he know my name for a start? And he stood up and he said, Ke, I got saved, and I promised that I would pay the Guru some money, so I'm taking my leave. And he said, Yeah, but you promised that you would give this month money. You've only placed this much money. In other words, he was the true Guru, he knew. And Makhan Shah was crying, he fell to the feet and he said, you truly are the Guru because you did save me. And Teg Bahadur showed his shoulder to him and he said, look, do you deny that I saved your ship? And there were marks on Guru Teg Bahadur Ji where he had transformed that ship across the water. What can't the Guru do? Guru is God. He is immaterial. The body is immaterial. The Guru is like particles, can be everywhere. And he saved Makhan Shah, and Makhan Shah then ran up to the Koti and told the whole paint, Guru Ladore, Guru Ladore, I found the Guru, I found the Guru. And when he did that, the other 22 imposters ran away because the Sikhs came around him. And they didn't like the imposters sitting there. This is how the Guru and the Shabad, the power of Bani. I would like to leave it here and say in the next minutes that we have for discussion that we would like to share our experiences because I have some experiences where I have felt Bani where Bani have done something to me or I have achieved something out of Bani things have happened to me and I'm sure by Sujit Singh and a lot of other people sitting here Guru does not recognize K Dr. D or by Sujit Singh or this or that Guru Ode Kol Hai Jera Guru Nutya Vega. If you are in tune with the Guru for that one instance, that one moment, whoever you are, because it is not just restricted to the sex of the Guru. A Bani, Guru Sahib Kandene, Khatri Vaid, Khatri Brahman Sud Vaz, Upadesh Choh Varne Ko Sanja. My Discourse, my intellect, my reasoning is for the whole of mankind. Whosoever takes up Nirban Kirtan Gavo Karteka, Nimak Simat Jitchute Gurusab Karne, Taram, Karam, Taram, Pakhand Jodi Se, Tin Jam Jagati Lute. Guru Ajandevji says, okay, all the things that we see around us, 
are fruitless, a waste of time. Do this and do that. Athe matha teko, athe matha teko. They are fruitless. They are symbolic of religion, but they are meaningless. And Guru Sahib says, Nirban kirtan gavo karte ka kirtan kisra gava? Bani da. Gurbani da gana is kirtan. And Guru Sahib says, Nirban kirtan gavo karte ka nimak simat jit chute. That by singing the kirtan, you can be liberated. And I would ask, that if Guru Arjan Dev Ji has said that you can do the kirtan and do the kirtan, you don't have to say that if a Muslim does the kirtan, that the kirtan will be the kirtan in the heart, that it will not be the kirtan in the heart. That the kirtan is not the kirtan in the heart. It is the kirtan in the heart. It is different to say that oh, that means that we don't have to become six. Why don't we just become Muslims and read the kirtan? That is not what we are saying. They will be liberated to their journey, but to be liberated to reach God is something else. But kirtan karna, te kirtan nu samjna, te kisra kirtan karna, te kon kirtan kare is a vakri gal. But the truth is that by doing this, you can be liberated. Upadesh chauvarne ko sanja. I would like to now share things with you, you with me, about the power of Gurbani in our lives, how Bani can change us or do things. And on the opposite, I would like to perhaps discuss in a few minutes that Jera Banda Bani Nahi Parda, Jera Banda Gurdwara Nahi Janda. If you stopped going to the Gurdwara, if you stopped listening to Bani, if you stopped doing Seva, if you stopped doing Darshan of the Saad Sangat, if you stop doing these, th these things, what will happen to you? Well, I think we have many experiences between us about that. That when a Sikh stops doing these things, what happens to that Sikh? And we can discuss that because I have some experience of that too. Ke jodo sahi raste tusi na toro, te fer ki thode nal hovega. That is a good way of thinking ke bani jab ke ki hon da par bani nahi jab ke ki hovega. If you don't do it, what will happen? So, thank you very much for listening and sharing these things with me. I will ask you to ask Kam Singh to open the discussion and we can perhaps discuss things between us. And don't be shy. Please don't be shy. Because if you've experienced something, please share it. Guru Sahib has shared everything with us. He has given his life for us. Yeah? He sacrificed himself, he sacrificed his children, his mother, his friends, his closest friends. He sacrificed everything with us, for us. And he shared these things with us. Why don't we share things among brothers and sisters so that we can all walk along this path? Let's share something. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh.